Hey guys, John here. Today we're going to be making that typical key gen chiptune type of sound. If you remember those old key gen programs that people used to use to crack software, I have never done such a thing because I would never steal a piece of software in my life. So I do know the sound though, and this sounds something like this. So to some it can sound very annoying and then to some it can sound very cool. So depending on where you stand, if you'd like to learn how to do this, then look no further. So first thing, let's turn off this little snare here that's kind of just there to keep a rhythm. And then for me personally, I always like to use external reverb because I feel they sound a little bit better than the in, in synth reverbs. And this is what I have here as a Valhalla, as you should know by now, I use Valhalla quite often. So let's disable this reverb for now. And then this is basically what it sounds like just in the synth. So let's go here and let's turn off some of our effects here. We have some distortion, some delay, and a little bit of EQ. So when we turn that off, this is what we have now. Now really the main characteristics of this sound is going to be the square wave here for the first sound because you kind of want that 8-bit kind of tone to it a little bit. And then the modulation is going to be very important. So for this first LFO, I have a shape of square and you can always click this here and then go to factory and then there's going to be a square option right here that you can select so you don't have to actually just draw. It's a little bit quicker that way. The tempo is going to be very fast, 1 over 32, because you want that very fast pitch modulation. So when we drag this LFO over to the pitch, it's going to default at 48 for the value. So once we drag it on here, this little circle, you want to right-click this, go to Enter Value, and make sure to put 24 in there so we have two, two octaves of, of, uh, of space or room to work with. Because if we have this at the default, uh, let's undo that. If we have the, the uh, 48 here, for example, I'll show you what, what that would sound like. So 48 on this one, and then 48 on this one as well. It's going to be quite a lot. So it's a little bit much, so we kind of want to drop that down as well. So enter values, go back to 24, so two octaves again on both oscillators here. So we have that typical sound again. If we didn't have this modulation, let's bypass these two. It would have that kind of sound, which is the typical tonality, the flavor of the sound we're going for, that kind of hollow, computery, square wave type of sound. That's good, but we do need that modulation. So let's go and unbypass both of these. Now we have that back. So we have four voices of unison for the square wave, and I dropped the detune from 20 down to 8 because I didn't want it too detuned. And then this is going to be up one octave, and then the second oscillator is going to be a default at zero, one voice. So this 20% doesn't really matter because we're only using one voice. 180 for the phase and 100% phase randomization for both of these oscillators. Now for the filter, we're going to be using the analog 24 dB and the cutoff is going to be 6,221 hertz and there's going to be no resonance on this as well. And this is kind of a little bit to taste because I did want to kind of cut up the very, very highest because those can be a little bit annoying. So moving on to our effects here, we have our first EQ and I only really just use this low band and cut off uh, 261 hertz and took, a, took about 10 point something, seven, 10 point, whatever, 10 dB about of low end off. Cause really those older sounds don't really carry that much low information. So I kind of brought that down just a little bit there. So it's a little subtle change, but it kind of brings down the low ends a little bit there. You can cut it off with an external EQ or with a filter if you'd like here as well. I just happen to use an EQ. So to taste, depending on what you want to do. Next up, we have some delay, both at 1 8 and it's going to be stereo here. The feedback is going to be 18.72, and the mix is kind of low at 11.83%. 11, 11 the cutoff, 18.84, and then the spread is going to be at 1, because we want a little bit of cutoff. We don't want the echoes to have the same harmonic content coming back to us, because it's not necessarily how that works in the real world. You're going to lose a little bit of high-end information every time an echo comes back to you. And then with that delay off, it's kind of kind of sterile. Next up is just a little bit of distortion, and this one's definitely to taste. It's kind of more interpretive, I guess you would call it. So if we turn this on, it's really just adding a little bit of extra harmonics here. It's going to be on the soft clip setting. The drive is going to be 5.8. 864 dB and then the mix about 0.583. 
And that's pretty much it for this patch. It's really not too difficult to use. One thing I did experiment for a little bit is using some of this glide here. So if you select always glide and kind of bring this up, It can be kind of cool, but it didn't necessarily seem like it fit the patch. But if you're doing some maybe other chiptune type of stuff, you can experiment with that glide option as, as, as well right there. And then for the last thing here, let's turn on our reverb here. Let's turn that back on. And then all together, it kind of sounds like this with the snare drum in there as well. Or it can have some kick drum too. Hopefully you learned something, and if you'd like this patch for free download, it's in the video description below. So have a good day, and we'll see you in the next video.